Welcome everyone to a CUDA worksheet tutorial. Today we're rationalizing the denominator. I've done a, uh, a couple of videos on this already, but I thought I'd offer another one. This one's a little bit more simple. This would be a good one to start on. Uh, some of the other ones are a little bit more difficult. And they're more of the algebra too. So if you're like intro to geometry or in algebra and you want to rationalize the denom denominator, you're in the right place. Okay, so here let's go ahead and start. We have this uh, fraction here and we have square root of three over square root of two. Looks fine, okay, nothing wrong with it. However, in algebra, in mathematics, we don't like to have this radical in the bottom. And the origin of that is it's very tough to divide by hand uh, any radical number, okay? So it was always easier to have it in the top. So this, there was this cool procedure called rationalizing that made it uh, so that there was no radical in the bottom. Now. You would agree that if I multiply by one, this would be the same thing. I would get square root of three over square root of two, okay? That would be the same thing. We don't change the value by multiplying by one, okay? I think you would also agree that if we do any number divided by itself, that equals one, okay? So if it was two over two, that'd be equal to one. If it was square root of two over square root of two, that'd be equal to one, okay? So let's do that. Let's multiply this by one, but instead of writing one, we're gonna write square root of two over two. So I'm gonna erase this, and I'm gonna write square root of two over square root of two. And the reason why is because that is equal to one, so we're not changing the value, we're just gonna be changing how it looks. Okay, what happens when we do this? Well, the rule fraction is we multiply the top times the top, and the bottom times the bottom. Okay, so what do we notice? Well. Anytime we multiply a radical by itself, or not by itself, but a radical uh, by another radical, we can combine the two numbers underneath the same radical. So we could write that as square root of three times two, and then square root of two times two. That equals the square root of six, and that equals the square root of four. Now, what was the whole point of doing that? Well, guess what? We know that this is a perfect square. Square root of four is equal to Two. So I can write square root of 6 over 2. Guess what? There's no longer a radical in the denominator. This is going to be our final answer, square root of 6 over 2. So the whole point is anytime you multiply a radical by itself, essentially what you do is you undo the radical. Okay, It's the same thing as square root of 2 times square root of 2 equals 2. Square root of 2 squared, it undoes the radical, you get 2. Okay, So that's the principle behind rationalizing the denominator. Let me show you a few more examples. In this case, we want to multiply. Again, we're going to look here to the bottom and we're going to look for any radical and we're just going to multiply that by the top and the bottom. Okay, so in the top, we're simply going to get three radical two and the bottom radical four. We can simplify that radical four and it becomes three radical two over two. Now from this step, make sure that this is fully reduced. Okay, you can reduce Nothing, uh, not the radicals, okay, because the radicals should only be in the top, but any numbers in front, okay, or in the bottom, you can reduce them if possible. In this case, it's not possible. There's our final answer. All right, let's take a look at number three. This is going to be one that you'll be able to reduce. So let's multiply it by one, aka square root of five over square root of five. That's the same value as one, okay? Now, what happens? Well, we get five, radical five in the top, and we already know that if we multiply these two together, we're gonna get square root of 25 or just simply five. Now what happens from here? Well, you notice that we have a five in the top and a five in the bottom. They can cancel each other out, why? Because five goes into five one time, five goes into five one time. This could be rewritten if you're really nitpicky as square root of one times square root of five over one, but you don't need to write those ones in mathematics if it's just uh, multiplication, it's identity principle, and our answer is gonna be square root of five. What about negatives? Negatives don't really affect it that much. Okay, one, one thing I always do is I like to rewrite the negative in the top. Okay, I think that makes it a little bit easier. We're gonna multiply radical three over radical three, and we get negative three radical three in the top, and then simply radical nine or three in the bottom. Always be mindful of canceling at the last step, and so in this case we get negative radical three, and that's our final answer. Let's see if we can get some harder ones. Okay, there's more radicals down here. Let's go ahead and handle these ones. Let's start with this guy. Now, key first step. Sorry, I should have mentioned this earlier. If the radical is not reduced, reduce the radical, reduce radicals 
multiple, and fraction if possible. That's your first step. So in this one, take a look. We have a two in the top and two in the bottom. Just get rid of it right away. Why create yourself a headache for no reason, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to um, simplify the square root of 12. This is for another video. Um, take a look at my how to simplify square roots uh, video, but essentially what it boils down to is the prime factor tree. So if I write square root of 12 here, I'm gonna write prime numbers on the left, two, three, and I'm gonna look for pairs of uh, numbers, pairs of prime numbers. So I get two, and then I can call this radical three, okay? This could be rewritten uh, just quick summary, times two times radical three. The same thing as radical four times radical three, that's two radical three. So I'm gonna rewrite this problem as two radical three over square root of 15. Okay, that makes it a little bit easier for us. Now, I'm gonna show you a second way to do this problem, but I'm gonna show you the way we've been doing first. Okay, what do we do from here? Well, we multiply by radical 15 over radical 15 to rationalize. In the top, we get two radical 45 over radical, uh, nope, it undoes the radical over 15. Now, the unfortunate problem is we're gonna have to rationalize again, okay? So we need to rationalize square root of 45 because that's too big, 45. Anytime it has a uh, square factor, you need to be able to rationalize it further. So this actually becomes pair of three, that becomes three radical 45, but you can't forget about the two out in front that we already had in the 15 at the bottom. Okay, so now we're gonna simplify this. Okay, so we have six, oops, it's not three radical 45, it's three radical five, sorry about that. So we get six radical five over 15. Still not done, okay? I should have done this in the previous step, okay, when you reduce the three and the 15, but we can do it here. So we're gonna reduce both of those by three and we get divide by three, oops, divide by three, divide by three, just to show you, two over five, and then radical five in the top. Two radical five over five. Now, another way to do this problem is to recognize, well, you, I would do this step here, okay? But you can also recognize that you can rewrite this as two over one, okay? Put the number and then the radicals together. Square root of three over square root of 15. Change this again. This is just another way for maybe some advanced students that really can pick up on this stuff. Three over 15, you can combine underneath the same radical, and then that becomes two times radical, two over one times radical, sorry, radical one over five. We divide both, by, three divided by 15 is one over five. This can be re rewritten as two times radical one over radical five. Radical one is just one, which disappears. And then we just do this over radical five. So that gives us two radical five over five. That's another way to do this problem. We get the same answer, okay? Let's just do one more for good measure. Uh, I'm gonna ignore, no, I'll do one of those. Actually, I'm gonna do two more. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump to, uh, number 16 looks good. So we're gonna go to number 16. Okay, I'm gonna reduce 12 and eight first. Okay, I'm gonna do both of those. Square root of eight, can be re rewritten as square root of four times square root of two. So that's two radical two, two radical two. Square root of 12 can be rewritten as square root of four times square root of three or two radical three, two radical three. The other numbers are gonna stay. So we have two times and then five times. So in the top, we get four radical two. In the bottom, we get 10 radical three. Not done, guess what? We need to rationalize even more. Multiply by radical three over radical three, that's the same thing as one. We get four radical six in the top. In the bottom, we get 10 times, let me show this in green actually, four, and we get 10 times, and then three. So this becomes, final answer, no, not final answer, four radical six over 30, we can reduce this by two, uh, and this by two. 15, so we get two radical six over 15. That's our final answer. Okay, let's do one of the variable ones just in case you're doing this type of problem. Um, we'll do like, uh, let's see, we'll do one that's a little difficult. Okay, we'll do this one. 
and then we're 30. So we're gonna do the same thing here, but if you can, try to take the square root uh, right away. So I'm gonna rewrite this as square root of four times square root of eight cubed, <clears throat> square root of five times square root of a to the fourth, okay? Now, I know that uh, square root of four is gonna be two, okay? That I know. Square root of a cubed, okay? So we're looking for perfect square factors. This could be rewritten as a squared times square root of a, okay? You add the exponents, a to the first plus a to the second, or times a to the second, you add the exponents two plus one, three, okay? Square root of a squared is just a, and then radical a has to stay by itself. So we're gonna rewrite this guy as a radical a. Next up, the bottom. Square root of five, I'm gonna leave him for now, but check this out, this guy, this is pretty cool. A to the fourth square root becomes square root a to the fourth is a squared. Okay, so a squared. A squared times itself is gonna be a to the fourth. So that's gonna give us a squared. Now there's only one radical to rationalize. Okay, but before I do that, I'm gonna do some canceling. I'm gonna cancel one of these a's with one of those a's. Rewrite the problem to radical a over radical five. I need to rationalize. I'm gonna multiply by radical five over radical five. You guessed it. In the top, I get two radical five a, and then I get five in the bottom, and there's my final answer. A little bit more complicated. You can still get through it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you need me to do any more of these problems, there's tons here, let me know, and I'll do my best to get uh, to it. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.